Uh, good morning, I'm Hong Nam Shah, a senior content analyst from Vero Associates. I'm so delighted to welcome you to this exclusive interview. Today we have the privilege of sitting down with a distinguished um, guest who holds significant responsibilities in shaping Queensland's development and infrastructure. Joining us is Honorable Stephen Miles, the Deputy Premier, Minister for State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning, and the Minister assisting the Premier on Olympic and Paralympic Games infrastructure by the Queensland Government. Uh, thank you for being here, uh, Minister Miles, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to discuss Queensland's renewable hydrogen prospect. So first of all, Mr. Miles, uh, as you dive uh, deeper into our conversation today, could you please share with us how do you manage various responsibilities and ensure effective coordinations between uh, these areas to drive sustainable development in the state? As someone who holds multiple significant um, portfolios in the Queensland government, including the Deputy Premier and the Minister for State um, Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning. Uh, by putting all of these tools in the one agency, it gives mm -hmm. us an ability uh, to create whole new industries like we're going to do with green hydrogen. We're already doing with green hydrogen, mm -hmm. uh, bringing together the leading economic development agency, uh, our planning powers through the coordinated general, mm -hmm. uh, all of the infrastructure that we will need, so transmission lines, uh, ports, water infrastructure, corridors, uh, having all of those tools together along with the local government portfolio, so ensuring uh, that local government bring local governments along and that they support these projects. So uh, really having all of those within my portfolio allows us to help deliver along with uh, private sector proponents uh, the certainty that they need to get the investment that they will need. Uh, it's a system that's proven itself in the past. Uh, Queensland uh, led a uh, entire new export LNG industry from uh, inception to export in just under 10 years. And that's exactly what we're aspiring to do with green hydrogen. Thank you, Mr. Miles. Uh, the Queensland government is actually committed to working with the private sector to accelerate uh, the production, use and export of hydrogen and secure a hydrogen feature. So can you please share with us the latest feature uh, project um, that the Queensland government is cooperating uh, with the local and international uh, cooperations and uh, what regulatory and financial support is um, provided for the private sector? Uh, so we have active investment projects at pretty much all of our East Coast ports and we have a lot of East Coast ports. Uh, the most advanced is the CQH2 project that's in its uh, engineering and design stage, $114 million feed, uh, feed study in partnership with uh, uh, partners from uh, right around the world but in particular Japan and uh, that will seek to leverage all of the advantages that Gladstone has to offer. It uh, sits with uh, massive transmission lines, a fantastic uh, port, a well-established industrial workforce. And what's really uh, important about that and many of the projects we're working on is that the state government owns all of the common user infrastructure. So we own the transmission, we own uh, most of the generation, we own the, the, the water board and the port. And so that along with our planning powers and our state-owned industrial estates gives us a, a real ability to de-risk projects, to say to proponents, uh, if you can get uh, the funding to get your project off the ground where well, we can bring so much of what else you need. Queensland is well placed for renewable hydrogen production with significant renewable resources and available lines. So can you please help um, outline the current commitment and the policies um, of Queensland government to scale up the hydrogen industry and how do this align with the federal government's um, Australia hydrogen, a uh, national hydrogen strategy? Well, we're already well on the way to meeting our renewable energy targets. Uh, we aimed to get to 50% by 2030. We'll achieve that two years earlier in 2028. Uh, we've set a new goal of 70% renewable energy by 2032 and 80% by 2035. We can do that because of those uh, natural assets. We have some of the best uh, sun and wind resources in the world, uh, as well as our geography really well, uh, really well suited to 
pumped hydro for storage and firming. And so we're putting all of that together to deliver the green energy that proponents will need to ensure that the hydrogen that they're producing uh, is green and is secure. And so our $62 billion renewable energy and jobs plan will deliver all of that renewable energy that the hydrogen industry is going to need to be green. Thank you, Mr. Miles. And it's just a really impressive milestone that Queensland has achieved through the pathway of um, green hydrogen. And as we all know, Queensland holds great potential for uh, green hydrogen export due to its abundant renewable uh, resources, available lines and ports. So given this stutter cobalt and the international hydrogen trade project under the pipeline in Queensland, how do you envision the future pathway of Queensland's green hydrogen export and what challenges should be tackled to uh, consolidate the Queensland's competitive position in this way? Well, we think these projects are just going to snowball and continue to feed into uh, new and additional projects and uh, that's uh, why we're so pleased to be supporting them with uh, uh, financial contributions from our government-owned corporations, as well as all of those uh, other mechanisms that, uh, that that I've already mentioned. What we're focused on, though, is not just exporting our renewable energy, uh, using as much of it here as we can to export green uh, green products uh, to the world, and also and also attracting as much of the supply chain as we can. So the world's largest electrolyzer manufacturer. Uh, factory uh, is under construction right now in Gladstone. So we're making sure that we're not just uh, using our energy to export, but we're also bringing onshore as many of the jobs in the supply chain as we possibly can. Thank you for sharing us with that, Mr. Mouse. And uh, the Queensland Hydrogen uh, Investor Toolkit has been a really valuable resources for investors interested in hydrogen project development in the state. So how has the updated version in 2022 addressed any challenges or gaps identified in the previous vision? And what support has the government offered to potential investors beyond this uh, toolkit? Well, we get great feedback from our investors in part because of the toolkit, which really uh, sets out what we're able to provide and what they need to uh, bring to us. But uh, we are constantly told that uh, from companies aiming to do business in different states or right around the world, that they find Queensland one of the best places to invest, uh, that we're able to provide that investor certainty through our state ownership of so many of, uh, so many of the assets, as well as uh, through our uh, planning mechanisms uh, and the capital contributions that we have available uh, where appropriate to these to these projects. So I'd say to anyone who's working their way through the toolkit or who wants further advice, please reach out, out to us. We have teams of people ready and able to work uh, with you to get your project off the ground. That's what we're after. Thank you, Mr. Mouse. And lastly, looking towards the future, what is your vision for Queensland's hydrogen industry in the next decade? And how do you see hydrogen contributing to the state's broader sustainability and economic um, objectives? Uh, green hydrogen is going to be critical and over the next 10 years, well in nine years, we'll be hosting the 2032 Brisbane Olympic and Paralympic Games. We've made a commitment that those games will be climate positive and in part we'll achieve that through all of those uh, renewable electricity projects that I've, uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, but we can't electrify everything and that's where uh, green hydrogen will allow us to protect existing jobs in all of our uh, high energy intensive industries and we have many of those. Uh, but also attract uh, new jobs, those industries of the future, using our, uh, our critical minerals, our green energy and our skilled workforce uh, to export green products to the world. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and experience with us today, Mr. Miles. And your valuable knowledge and expertise in the green hydrogen sector have provided us with a deeper understanding about what is happening in Queensland and uh, this beautiful hydrogen landscape. It's been a really pleasure to explore Queensland's potential in renewable hydrogen production and the government's uh, resolute commitment to a sustainable hydrogen future for all Queenslanders. Thanks for having me.